cataractcoach.com, for a dense white cataract, should we fix the astigmatism? And that's an important question to consider. This is a patient, the cataract's very opaque, the preoperative vision is only counting fingers at three feet. Tripan blue dye is already in the eye. Here comes our dispersive viscoelastic to protect the corneal endothelium and give us some space there in the anterior chamber. And so we're doing this case, and the patient certainly needs cataract surgery. This is a very opaque cataract. Again, counting fingers, vision only. Not even 20 out of 400 on the vision chart. And so the question is, of course we'll fix the cataract, but should we also fix the astigmatism at the same sitting? Should we address the astigmatism? And my answer is yes. Now, a patient like this, if you just do a cataract surgery, even if the patient is left with residual astigmatism, even if the patient doesn't achieve the post-op target you want of plano spherical equivalent, even if it's plus one or minus one spherical equivalent, the patient's going to be happy. Because remember, patient's happiness is the difference between their pre-op vision and their post-op vision, or the delta between their expectations and their actual results. So in this case, the pre-op vision is so poor that even if the patient ends up with 20, 50, 20 out of 60 um, uncorrected visual acuity, the patient will be very happy. But I believe in making the patient maximally happy. And that means let's give this patient the same high level of care, achieving the same great refractive outcome that we would want in an eye that didn't have such a dense cataract. So we do everything to the highest degree here. Here comes the phaco probe going in the eye. We're going to chop this nucleus buzzing with the phaco probe. Here comes the chopper, and we'll separate it. And you can see this is a nice dense lens. It takes a few tries to really get that chop propagated all the way through the posterior plate of the nucleus. We're going to bring up one half and get the chop around it and chop off another piece. And you can see there is good density here. This is truly an opaque cataract, a lot of density. And this is why the patient had such poor preoperative visual acuity of counting fingers. Now in this patient, you can see we've already put ink marks on the limbus at the 12 o'clock, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions. And those are to mark the cardinal meridians. We've also already marked the steep axis of astigmatism. In this eye, we're operating temporally. The phaco incision is 90 degrees away from that steep axis. We've marked the steep axis, um, I think it's about 105 degrees. And so this phaco incision is about at maybe 15 or degrees or so. And remind you, the reason why we're doing this is the this incision will certainly slightly worsen the magnitude of the astigmatism, but it won't change the direction of it because we're on the if you're on the flat or steep axis, again, you'll change the magnitude of the astigmatism, but not its um, orientation. And so we took out the cataract pretty cleanly. If this patient, you can tell, is under top anesthesia. There's still some movement of the eye. Now the eye probe coming in, taking out our cortex, whatever little is remaining there. We'll polish up the capsular bag. So in this eye, yeah, we'll put a toric lens in the eye. And this toric lens will help address the patient's astigmatism. The patient has about two and a half diopters of corneal astigmatism. It's very regular. We had to do multiple topographies and tomographies at a time because the patient had a difficult time fixating, but we were able to get good um, measurements preoperatively, and it showed very consistently that degree of astigmatism. So we'll put our toric lens in, aiming to neutralize that astigmatism, and we're aiming for a plano refractive outcome. Now, I'm happy to tell you this patient actually did achieve that plano outcome, and this is one of the true miracles of modern medicine. I mean, you took a patient who had counting fingers vision, so certainly functionally blind to this eye. And in a surgery that takes, let's say, six minutes, even if it takes 30 minutes, you can give the patient a totally normal vision. This patient achieved uh, basically a plano outcome and 20-20 uncorrected vision and was absolutely thrilled. So if you have a case like this with a very terrible cataract, a dense white cataract, terrible pre-op vision, and it's, of course, from the cataract, then it makes sense for me to fix the cataract. And also, while we're there, let's address the full refractive error, hyperopia, the myopia, and, of course, the astigmatism as well. 
putting the phaco probe in the eye here, going to go underneath, remove that uh, viscoelastic from behind the eye well. Now you see there are two sets of marks here. Of course, the eye well is a toric lens, so it does have those three dots at the haptic optic junction on each side. And then I've also made three dots on the cornea. And all we have to do is line up those dots of the eye well with the dots on the cornea, and that will mean the lens is in the ideal position that we want. So we'll use the chopper here to do that. Remember, I'm using the Purkinje images, lining them up to avoid parallax, making sure we're lining up those Purkinje images, and then we can seal up the incisions. We'll call this a day. Nice overlap of the optic for 360 degrees by the capsular rexus, and a nice generous sized capsular rexus. This patient's gonna have a beautiful outcome. So my advice to you, you'll have many of these patients in your clinic, always aim for the biggest before and after change. Even if the patient has terrible pre-op vision, always aim to give them the absolute best vision, including addressing the astigmatism and fixing all of the refractive error. Thank you for watching.